Welcome back. Earlier this year, you may remember, Sunday reported on an extraordinary gathering in Canberra. 330 men and women from around Australia got together for a long weekend. It was sparked by the infamous Cronulla riots, the bombings of 9-11, other acts of terrorism around the world. There were 50 Australian Muslims and a high-powered bunch of experts, but mostly they were ordinary Australians. Many had never even met a Muslim person. Well, after that meeting and after two years of research by social scientists, Issues the Liberation Australia has released its report just this week and a documentary called Beyond Beliefs. Now, it concludes that we are racist and there's a grim warning as well. We better do something fairly quickly. Dr Pam, uh, Pam Ryan, rather, from Adelaide is the social scientist in charge of Issues Deliberations Australia. You know, We've been here really since been 1850, pal. So if your people have been here from 1850, it makes you more of an Aussie than what That's I am? That's right, precisely. Pam Ryan, welcome to Sunday. Thank you. When it comes to racism, do you think that our political leaders are ignoring the truth? Oh, not necessarily ignoring the truth. I think it's a very human response to be racist. We're programmed to be racist by thousands of years of evolution because it's natural to fear the other. So they're just being human. But it's not nice to say we're racist. We prefer not to be, do we? Yes, I know. And, and I make that accusation based on a whole lot of research and don't take the accusation lightly. I know it's offensive, but we have to face our reality and Cronulla showed us that that is a reality and almost two years of research has showed us also that it is a reality. There are people out there who do not understand us as Muslims. It does hurt when you know there are people out there who absolutely loathe you. And when that hate within them is not justified. The autumn corroboree at Canberra's old Parliament House last March was an extraordinary coming together. And at the time, international experts on race relations, like Chicago's Dr. Ibu Patel, put this Canberra confrontation into true perspective. I've never seen anything quite like this before. Anything that combines the, the breadth of participation with the depth of discussion. There's a, a small minority. I'm not sure how small it is. This extraordinary Canberra meeting allowed ordinary Aussies to listen to high-powered panels and ask confronting questions in smaller groups. We need to, not to look at the symptoms. We need to look at the sickness itself. The study also conducted telephone and face-to-face -face polls with hundreds and hundreds of people across Australia over almost two years. It was a true cross-section. So we have a really in-depth picture of what racism looks like, like in Australia and I'm not sure that that's been done anywhere else in the world. But it seems you found what we already knew, that ignorance breeds racism. We found that lack of information, lack of knowing the other, lack of being able to walk in another's shoes breeds racism. This is the symbol that drew our federation together. We need space and our own cultures not to be mixed together to create a horrible looking melange that is not going to be happy. Get out of here, mate. There's a lot of Australians, unfortunately, who insult Muslim women, you know, get that scarf off, go back to your own country. That's, really, that's very hurtful. Uh, and it comes basically from two things, a lack of knowledge and unfounded fear. But, but we think we're tolerant. Yes. With a 30 years of multiculturalism, you don't think we are. Oh, I think you asked me earlier what was my surprise with this research. I was surprised about Cronulla and I, I was surprised about the level of racism and the fact that it is in our streets, in cities and suburbs, it is happening in the supermarkets, it's happening in the shopping centres, in the car parks around the country. Did you think we had to wear this dirty linen? We wanted to trigger a national, informed national dialogue on this issue. So we wanted to say there is a tension between Muslims and non-Muslims in Australia and in the rest of the world and let's talk about it. Let's get it out in the open. Our question is why does the Islamic community in Australia appear to condone radical extremist Islamic leaders by keeping them in leadership? What radical? And we have to clear here what radical means. Means you say what you think is right 
the reason that we have a gathering like this is because there is a small group, a very small group of Muslims who have it in their hearts um, to annihilate the West. One lady came up to me and said very directly, it says, with him, says, do you really want to bomb us? And I've worked in that place for years and she's had the benefit of knowing me for that many years. And I said, do you really believe that? She says, no. But maybe you know someone that wants to bomb us. I'm going to, uh, with their help, I'm going to sing the verses. But experts and from then, Bob uh, Hawke yeah, on down the, all agreed uh, that, in fact, we probably do it better than most in Australia in terms of mixing our cultures. Yes, those Muslims with whom we've spoken, they essentially love being Australian. But at the same time, the second generation younger Muslims are being questioned and they're being labelled and they're being taunted. We're not aliens from outer space and, you know, we are living in Australia just like them and we want harmony just like everybody else. Were you surprised, though, that the hijab, the, the headscarf, was the cause of so many questions, so much concern? Yes, and one of the questions we asked in the survey was, should people coming to live here dress like most other Australians? And most Australians certainly think that they should, so it was, I think, almost two-thirds. If you ask the same question of Muslims Australians, they said the opposite, that people should be allowed to wear whatever they would like to wear. Let's not see her for the hair headscarf, but see her for her talent, or see him for his background, you know, and we can work together. You know, I'm first and foremost Australian, so people need to understand that, you know, I'm willing to help in any way to make Australia a better place. Well, you brought 320 Australians together to talk and understand each other. How do you now bring 21 million Australians together? Is it about an awareness campaign? Australia has been really good at public awareness campaigns on health issues in particular. Smoking, so, drinking. Smoking, drinking, drugs. skin cancer, drugs. And in some ways, racism and the stress that it causes could be considered a public health issue. And the fact is of 350,000 or so Australian Muslims, half of them are under 24 years of age, so half of them are young people. Yes. In our study we found that almost two-thirds, or just over two-thirds of them, felt discriminated against. I am here, therefore, so that you can elect me to be the next Prime Minister. No, I was joking. <laughs> the Canberra weekend, along with the rest of this comprehensive survey, shows quite clearly that when people get a chance to meet and ask questions... My understanding is if you, if you don't believe in Islam, you're an infidel. ..the prejudice and the stereotypes and the urban myths start to break down. But why are we surprised? My neighbours, um, they think they're terrorists. They should be all shot. And I've sort of said, oh, no, no. But I haven't gone any further than that. So I'm going to have try and tell them what I did this weekend and how the people I met this weekend. And it's going to take great courage to do that. I've got no problem whatsoever. Any Muslim, any time, anywhere, they are welcome at my place and welcome at my barbecue any time. Down. There are still people right at the top. We're about to have a federal election, Pam. On the strength of your findings, what advice would you give the Australian leaders? Racism is here, racism is reality, and we have a, a leading edge opportunity in Australia to, to be the leader in the world, to say, let's address racism, let's confront it head on, and let's use this window of opportunity to be able to raise public awareness about this issue and to reduce the level of racism. Yeah, she's ringing the alarm bells. I think like Aboriginal Australians, you know, we must get to know the Muslim Australians.